this video is for my junior level students. I'm just going to quickly go over what we're doing this week, uh, just in case we miss our Zoom meeting. Uh, I know some of us in Lamont today may have had some internet connection issues, uh, so this video here should help fill in the gaps, help catch you up, let you know what you missed, uh, or what is ahead for this week in case you need to miss uh, an upcoming Zoom period. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, if you jump into Canvas, okay, you go to Modules, we're going to continue our work in Module 6. Uh, but this week, for Lesson 2, we're going to be looking closely at a lot of pictures, okay? Yes, we're going to be reading pictures because pictures work as a tool for storytelling. Okay, there's a message behind a lot of photojournalism, and it's really important that we're able to make educated guesses about what's going on in a picture uh, using a combination of stuff that we already know and then stuff that we're presently seeing in the picture itself. So if you go into the first page of the lesson, you'll see the Common Core State Standards we'll be working with. You'll be seeing our, our learning goals. Our learning goals for this week is to make accurate inferences to determine the theme or central idea of a text, a visual text, so pictures, graphics, what have you. Uh, you'll be able to make strong claims that can be supported by text or by what you see in a picture. Uh, you'll be able to select relevant evidence from visual text to support an analysis of you know, the work's meaning and you'll be able to provide reasoning that explains the connection between the evidence and your claims, your main themes. So on the first page, I'm going to have you participate in the discussion. And this discussion actually has you do a little bit of research. What you're going to do is you're going to jump onto Google and looking at the topics of justice and rights, you are going to find a current event. You're going to find a news article ideally from one of these news organizations up here at the top of the of the graphic okay the these news organizations here in this green box they're considered balanced they're considered more fair okay we might have one that skews a little more to the left or a little more to the right uh, but you know these are more reliable sources and ideally you're going to look for one of these sources to help you with this and you're going to share an article about a current event that has to relate with justice and rights. And I assure you, there are plenty of things happening in our world today that can help you. So what you're going to do is you're going to share your link, you're gonna share your news story, you're going to tell me how it connects to the topics of justice and rights, and you're also going to tell me how that relates to the American dream. So please respond to this prompt uh, in the discussion, and don't forget to respond to at least one of your classmates' posts. Okay, I'm not asking for two just respond to one. Okay, if you go to the next page of the lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we make inferences from visual text. So I'll just give you this presentation right now. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a lesson. Um, if you've already seen this in our Zoom class, you can just skip ahead a few minutes. Uh, but what we're going to look at is we're going to look at this picture in particular. All right. So here's a picture of an individual, and I'm not quite sure if this is a woman or if this is a man, uh, but what we see is we see this person, and when we look at this picture, we're going to look at every detail we possibly can make out from it. So we see this person standing here. They're standing in the middle of a road. We can see that, right? We see the blacktop. We see the trees on the outside. We see the leaves. We see a huge herd of sheep, and speckled in throughout it, I see goats. I see all kinds of livestock in here, okay? And then we have a dog here. We see this dog in white. Now that's what's just in the foreground. If we look in the background of this image, uh, we see a few more interesting details. We see people standing in the road. Okay, we see traffic stopped. Because uh, trust me, it doesn't look like traffic can run through here. Okay, we see another individual kind of hanging out here in the trees in the background. And unless I know the backstory of this, unless I know who this person is and why they're here, you know, the best thing I can do is just take what I, what I see here in the picture and also take information that I already have in my brain. All right. Oops, wrong button. Here's what I, here's what I wanted to do. There I am. So when I look at a picture like this, 
Okay, I, I see the picture in front of me. I see every detail. I see the colors of the trees. I see the road, the sheep, the dog, the person. But I also need to take information that I have gathered throughout my entire life's experience in order to make sense of this picture. And I assure you, unless you know the true backstory, you're not going to get it absolutely 100% correct. But when we make educated inferences, what we're doing is we're taking the best of what we can see and what we know, and we're making an educated guess as to what the story is behind this picture using those two pieces of the recipe. So from my life's experience, and hopefully from yours as well, some common knowledge. Okay, we know that sheep are herded by shepherds, right? And so that gives me a clue. Okay, this person's standing here in the middle of the road with these sheep. Can we assume that this person is a shepherd? Well, certainly, because isn't there more evidence that we see to support that as well? One thing I know about shepherds is I know that they use dogs. I know they use herding dogs in order to guide their flock. And looking at this dog right here, looking at its posture, looking at where its attention is drawn to, Okay, we see this dog looking at this person standing in the middle of the road, laying down, being for the most part pretty obedient. Okay, you guys have seen my puppy run around here. She's nuts. She's very energetic. She's very hyper. I assure you if my dog, even though she is bred to be a herding dog, I assure you if she were out here with these sheep, she'd be yapping her little head off, probably scaring them, scattering the sheep into the forest, running back and forth like a crazy dog that she is. But not this dog. This dog is lying down and we see its head slightly turn to this individual right here, as if it's in job mode, as if he's working, as if he or she, I don't know the sex of the dog, uh, is waiting for a command from their master, okay? Not only that, but I also know where sheep like to graze. They like grain, they like lush fields, they like food, okay? It's unlikely that someone will intentionally take sheep and put them onto a road, right? This is where it gets a little tricky. So we take what we see, okay, we see the dog, the sheep, the person, the road. We take what we know about shepherding, and here, let me go ahead and... We take what we see, and we take what we know, and we can make an educated guess. We can make an inference as to what the story is behind this picture, okay? And what we can infer is that the sheep are being used to intentionally block the road somewhere in Europe. Okay, we can assume that this is Europe because, you know, of the way that the trees look. And, I mean, we've played GeoGuessr a few times. You know, we can guess that sheep are a little more common in, in Europe than they are here in the United States, which isn't entirely true. I have a relative that used to breed them. But either way, you know, we can make an educated guess as to what's happening in this picture. This is being used as a protest. Now here's where the facts come in. So this is actually a caption from the original story that appeared in 2010. Okay, the sheep block the road near, and I'm going to butcher the name of the city, Gorleben in northern Germany, a town that is to store nuclear waste that originated in Germany and was being sent back from France where it was treated. There have been vigorous protests along the route. All right, which makes sense, right? Doesn't this look like this person is protesting? From what we can see in their face and their body stature, are they commanding their dog to move the sheep out of the way so people can pass by on the road? Do they seem eager to get out of the way? Do they seem eager to move? No, not exactly. So yeah, we can assume, we can safely infer that this is a person protesting. And so with our inference, what we're going to do is we're going to make a claim, like we've been working on. So although it would be very difficult to make an inference that is this suspicious, Specific, ah, I'm, having, I'm bumbling and stumbling here. Specific, unless you have some background knowledge of the story, you can get close just by using this inference process. Okay, I don't expect you guys to know where Gorleben is in a map, but you can make a guess combining what you see and what you know. So, using that information, we can make the theme, that individual text, okay, in the picture, in the photograph from the New York Times in 2010. Okay, there's our tag. And that, guys, sometimes you're not going to get every single letter of a tag. Okay, we don't know who the photographer is. Okay, that wasn't included. Okay, but we do have the genre here. It's a visual text. It's a photograph. And we do know it's the New York Times. They, they can be our author. 
Okay. 2010. It's clear that the people of Gorleban, Germany, do not want to store nuclear waste in their town because of the danger composed to their health. Okay, this is a safe assumption. So, not only can we make a claim, but we have to back it up with evidence. That's something we've been learning all year. So now what we're going to do is, now we know a little bit more about the backstory, we're going to use evidence from the picture to support our claim. And here it is right here. Okay, so here's our main claim. In the visual text from the New York Times in 2010, it's clear that the people of Gorleban, Germany, do not want to store nuclear waste in their town because of the danger composed to their health. This can be seen in the image. As sheep are being used to block a road near the town, that would be used to transport the waste. This seems to be a form of peaceful protest used by the Germans. Okay, here we're taking the evidence that we see in the picture. The sheep blocking the road in order to support our claim up here. So that's what I want you guys to work on this week. That's what we're going to do together. So if you go to the next page, okay, this is something that we're going to do together as a class. All right. And if you're not able to make it to any of our Zoom classes before, just know that this isn't going to be put into the grade book. This is just something that we're going to work on together uh, before I cut you guys loose to work individually on this next assignment, which is right. I don't think it's this next page. I think it's the the one after. It's this next page. We'll go over it here. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at these pictures of protests. Now the first slide's presentation has more recent protests um, from the year 2020. Okay, we had a, a lot of examples of protests um, for both sides this year. Uh, so we'll be looking at that. And we'll be looking at these pictures, and I'll, I'll just show you an example right here. Okay, so this is picture 7A. Now, this is where we need to work together and take what we see in the picture and then also compare it with what we know. And so we have a little bit of background information. Okay, especially this year since Derek uh, Chavon, the person accused of killing... Uh, uh, George Floyd. Okay, he's he's going to trial this week. So, you know, even though this was last year, this is still relevant to today's topic and uh, today's news, today's current events. But looking at this picture, we see the crowd, we see them wearing masks, and automatically my eyes are drawn to the subject of this picture, which is a sign. Okay, this is a sign of a man. And... Without the right background knowledge, I wouldn't know who this is. However, taking my life's experiences, I know that this is a portrait of George Floyd, who sparked a lot of the protests, especially in Minneapolis, in the year 2020. Okay? So I look away from the subject and I look towards other things. I see the person holding the sign. She's looking directly at the camera. She's wearing a mask. She's wearing black. I see a lot of other people wearing black as well. I see them wearing masks. I see another sign here. Say her name, Brianna Taylor. Now, if I didn't have the right background information, I wouldn't know who Brianna Taylor was. But because I've been watching the news all year, I know that she is another victim to police brutality. And this tells me what these people are here for, what these people are, are protesting against, what they're gathered for. And, I mean, we can do that. There are several other examples in here as well. Okay, but I'm not going to go through them because I want you guys to go through this on your own. Because what you're going to do by yourselves in this activity, and let me make a copy of this and let me show you. Looking at the pictures, and I want you to pick at least two pictures. It'd be best if you pick them from the same, same slides presentation, but if you want to pick one from one and one from the other, that's fine. But what you're going to do is you're going to copy and paste the image you're analyzing, or if it makes it easier for you, you can give me the title. So for example, this one up here, this one's titled 7A. And so here you'll write in 7A, or you'll just copy and paste the picture, whatever's easiest for you. And you're going to tell me what the what you see in the picture. Okay, this is a saving matter chart. We usually use this for writing. So it asks, what does the quote say? But in this particular case, you want to tell me what the picture says. 
Okay, what do you see in the picture? What does the picture express to you? And so here you will share important visuals. What do you see? Don't tell me what anything means, okay? Don't tell me what, what anything means. What do you see? What do you notice? What is in the picture? So you'll look at that. And then you'll come over to the next chart here. Now, this is a chart that I give my freshmen. This is really helpful for us to, to make sense of, of difficult content. Um, so in this box right here, you're going to tell me what you're, what it means. What do these visuals mean? So for example, if I'm looking at 7A, okay, the large portrait is a picture of George Floyd, who sparked a protest against police brutality. Okay? And so, you know, in, in this box right here, you know, I would tell you what I saw. Okay, I, I see an example of, I see a protest, I see a sign with a portrait of a black man. I see another protester with a sign that has the name Liana. Is that how you spell her name? Yeah. Liana Taylor. Oops, Taylor. So that's what I'm seeing. But what does it mean? I see the large portrait of the picture of George Floyd who sparked a protest against pro police brutality in 2020. Okay, and you can include um, other things here as well. But over here, this is where you need to tell me why it matters. Okay, why does this painting of George Floyd matter? Why does it matter to the protesters? Why did this person bother making, and it looks like they put a lot of effort into it. Why did this person paint a sign with George Floyd's face on it and no other words? What was the purpose of that? And so that's where you come in in this box right here and you tell me, you know, what does the evidence matter? Why does it matter? What does it mean? What does it matter? This is where you come up with your reasoning here. Okay? And this you're going to do on your own. All right. Now, I skipped ahead here. If you go back to the last page, uh, there's a presentation here on theme and reasoning, which covers topics I've talked about before. So you can just... Uh, go through this on your own, but it basically tells you how the same mean matter chart works. Uh, so you guys can do that on your own. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, especially since I just showed you how it's done. Uh, but what you'll do when you're done with that, I think that's the last assignment I gave you for this week. Let me double check. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, so those are our lessons for this week. Those are the, that's what we're going to work on together. Um, I'm interested to see what you guys can infer uh, from these visual texts that I'm giving you. Uh, you know, photography is important. Photography is an amazing art, and it takes an amazing skill to be able to tell a story through photographs. Um, I have a lot of experience in this. I used to dream of being a photojournalist, and in, in college I did a lot of work as a photojournalist. Um, so, you know, it's really important that you're able to read a photograph just as well as you're able to read a news article or a book or a short story, or a poem. Um, so, you know, take that in consideration when you work this week. Um, but mainly what we're going to do is we're going to continue our look at the theme related to social justice and uh, protesting and, uh, and human rights. So I'm eager to continue forward with this. Thank you guys so much for watching. And that's what we're going to do this week. So take care. <laughs> Bye.